lecture is entitled Carlo Maderno and the Italian Baroque. And in today's lecture, we're going to take a quick look at Carlo Maderno, look at two examples of his most famous building facades, and try to understand what his unique role was in the Italian Baroque. First thing you should understand about Carlo Maderno is that he's considered a transitional figure. Transitional figure. And when I say transitional figure, what I mean is transitional between Renaissance and Baroque. He was actually trained in the late Renaissance, and his early career began at the end of the Renaissance, but he sort of ushered in a new style, the new Baroque. He's seen as one of the main figures responsible for doing that. So he kind of bridges the gap between the two worlds and is an important figure in that way, connecting these two worlds. Now the two images we're going to look at today are the facade of Santa Susanna, which you see on the left, and the facade of St. Peter's Basilica, which you see on the right. And these are arguably two of his most important building facades. Santa Susanna was one of his first commissions, and the appearance of the facade is very typical of Carlo Maderno's facades. With the two levels, the triangular pediment at the top, the scrolling volutes at the side, um, all of these classical elements, the division of space with the columns and pilasters, as well as the strong focus on the central portal. St. Peter's Basilica, the facade, is also very important, largely because of what it is. It's St. Peter's Basilica, which is the heart of the Catholic Church, the heart of the Counter-Reformation. Let me write that down really quickly. Heart of Counter-Reformation. So clearly a really important commission in that regard. Now, you have some reading assignments about Carlo Maderno, so I'll, I'll let those speak for themselves, and Santa Susanna is discussed in those readings, uh, but I wanted to put it on the screen here so you can take a look at it and examine it as I discuss St. Peter's Basilica, which is the main focus of today's lecture. Now, as you probably remember from earlier art history courses, St. Peter's was obviously a really important commission, and it was built over the course of many, many years. And it's kind of a complicated commission because there's the old St. Peter's, which was built in the fourth century by the Emperor Constantine. And then there's what's known as New St. Peter's, or just St. Peter's, which is what stands today. And that plans for that began as early as the 16th century and what might have made the church want to rebuild its main church why would they have wanted to create something new well obviously again everything goes back to the protestant reformation so in the 16th century as the catholic church is threatened by the protestant reformation they decide we're going to get rid of old saint peter's and build something new and impressive that will show our power and authority. So again it's a really complicated commission and a lot of different people worked on it but essentially Carlo Maderno can be credited with the facade and let's look at this facade. Let's try and s see what we think is Baroque about it, what's interesting about it and we looked at this in our lecture introducing Baroque architecture so Let's review some of the things we discussed. Well, we mentioned the use of the colossal order, which I'll write down again, colossal order, which if you recall is uh, grand scale. Um, unlike over here at Santa Susana um, and the architecture that was more typical of the Renaissance as well, we have massive scale architectural elements look at these columns going from the ground level all the way up to the ceiling level and what is the implication of that what is what does that suggest to a person maybe standing in front of it well it certainly 
is more awesome and imposing and authoritative. So that's very much in line with the goals of the Counter-Reformation Church, right? To prove their own authority and power. So that's one thing that we see right off the bat. And I mentioned last time, this is something we'll see a lot in Baroque architecture. And we see it here, and it, it makes perfect sense for the church that it's built in. Don't see that in Santa Susana, which is a smaller, more intimate setting. So it makes sense that you wouldn't see it there. But the facade of St. Peter's Basilica is kind of showing us a hint of what's to come in later Baroque. Now, another important thing that you should know about Carlo Moderno particularly, and you do see this with other architects, but Carlo Moderno was famous for drawing the visitor's eye to the central portal of his church facades. Let me write that down. Drawing your eye to central portal. And that might sound like a strange thing. I mean, how does architecture draw your eye? You know, it's not like there are arrows pointing at the central, the central portal, but in a sense, architecture can do that. Through other architectural elements, it can direct your attention to what it wants to direct your attention to. So how exactly does he do that on both of these church facades? Well, in one sense, he does it by creating a rhythm that, that attracts you to the central portal. And what I mean by that is you have all of these classical vertical elements on the facade of both of these churches, kind of marching along the facade. But notice how the spacing between these elements gets closer as you move towards the center. And this is just a little trick that brings your eye towards the center. And not only does it bring your eye towards the center, but it creates movement and liveliness in the church facade. Another interesting thing he does in both of these churches is these, with these same vertical elements, he, he moves from the flat to the more sculptural. These on the outer edges are flat pilasters. And then as you move towards the center, they're more uh, defined, more three-dimensional columns that are actually sticking out quite a ways from the surface of the building. And to even extend that, to make it more three-dimensional, the wall surface of the facade behind these vertical elements moves forward as well. So it seems to actually move, move towards the visitor as you, your eye moves from the outside of the building towards the inside of the building. So really clever manipulation of this architecture and, you know, it's important to remember, this is not completely unfamiliar architecture. This is still very much in the classical architectural language, classical, right, with the columns, the triangular pediment, and all of this stuff that's very familiar by now. And even this central portal of the church is, it recalls classical temple fronts right, with the columns across the front and the triangular pediment. So this is classical language, but it's being used in a very new way. And that's really one of the hallmarks of Baroque architecture. And much like the sculpture that we've already taken a look at of Baroque Italy, there's an interest in creating drama, dynamism, movement, and really engaging not just the space around it, but the people who are looking at it. So keep this all in mind as we move forward because these are themes of Baroque architecture in general.